Okay, I figured I would just record this for you because um, if I describe it just in words, you might not understand what I'm talking about. But I have a template. I just, you know, saved a Word document as a template. And I've added a little form that I named Form Discovery, you know, Insert Form. And then I added a module that I've named Discovery where the code will go. So on the form itself, um, you'll have whatever you have now. I'm, I'm just assuming that you're showing them some form and they're picking a choice from it. So what I would do, or what I do do, is I have a combo box. So here's my little toolbox, get a combo box, put this on the form. Now a combo box, you can load up with stuff, but also people can type whatever they want in it, as long as it's a combo box and not a list box. So over here, let me get this up where the thing can see it. There's some style, style. See how this says form drop down combo where I'm moving around over to the left. As long as that's the case, which it will be by default, they can type whatever they want in it. Uh, if you change it to drop down list, they can only choose what you put on the list. So we leave that a combo box. And then um, I'm sure you'll have some kind of command button on there to tell you when they're done. You know, like OK and cancel. So we'll just make this an OK button. Caption, caption. <laughs> Where am I? Whatever. And we'll give it the accelerator of O so that they can press Alt-O if they want to activate it instead of having to click it or press Enter. Okay, so there's our little form. Now, obviously, you'd have more than that in your form, but let me get into the code now. Here's where I'd write the code. And I would have, like, sub, let's say, get discovery phrase. Now I do my forms a little different um, than a lot of people, but I'm going to do it the way I think you're doing it. Um, I don't know if I even know how, actually. All right, I'm just going to do it my way, sorry. So I declare an object as whatever the form is. So. Basically, it's making a copy of that form and bringing it into memory. And I only do that because 20 years ago I read that was the better way to do it. I never totally understood, but I read a few times on the internet that this was superior to just showing the form. So here I've declared it, and let's do a variable for the phrase. So that's going to be their phrase. And then... Um, I want to do something with this form. So I'm going to set it, because it's an object, I have to use the word set, to a new form discovery. That's what I named that form. Now I'm going to say with that, let's do some things. So with that, let's take our combo box. Let me go back to the form, because I didn't think to name this. I'll name this, I always start combo boxes with CB for combo box, and I'll name it CB disk phrase, whatever you want to name it. Okay, get back to the code. Okay, with our form, now I think you know about with, it, it's like once I say with this form, if I'm in here and I press period, I get to see all the things that I can do to or with the form. If I hadn't done with, and I'll just go above that code. I could have just said o form dot such and such because I created it right here with the set new. It exists. Now I can do things with it. But it's faster for the computer, supposedly, if you do with and then do all the different things you want to do to it inside of there. It doesn't have to get in and out, in and out, in and out. It just goes into the form, does everything you say, and then gets out. So with our form, combo box we want to add our phrases so I'm going to say dot CB for combo box and that brings us up because it's the only thing in their name that starts with CB press the tab got it and I'm going to add an item to it now I just know this from reading on the internet is how I knew how to do it but I'll say P 
period again, and there's a method. The little green thing's a method for add item. Tab chooses that. And what do I want to add? I want to add discovery number. And then you could just press enter at this point. It will work fine. But what I usually do is put a comma, and we're going to give them index numbers. So they start at 0. 0 is the first, and 1 would be the second. So I would just add whatever phrases I want. My brain stopped. There's my string of text, comma. This will be number one on the index. And then um, I don't really. Whatever. OK, and that'll be number two, and so on and so forth. Now, if you want, oh, I could have also, well, I should have used my with. I should have said with the phrase thing, since everything we're doing in here is to that phrase, and that speeds things up, supposedly, too. So it's like a little sub with. Hey, I thought it would jump to that on its own. OK, now what you could do is let's say that you want the default to be special interrogatory number. So we just took our combo box, and we just added these three phrases to it. And if I want it to go to this one, I could just say at this point, this index equals 1. And that way, when we go into the form, when we show it to the user, it'll add all these to the combo box, and then make whatever one is number 1 the one that shows. OK, then I'm going to show them the form. But something that I always do with my little form is I set a tag. Every form has a tag. And I set it to cancel. So that if they don't click OK, I would usually actually have a cancel button. But if they don't click OK, then it's going to know that they canceled out and it's not going to do anything in the document. So the tag I set to cancel. And then I show them the form. Now they're looking, the end user is looking at the form. Now when they're done looking at the form, it comes right back to here, and then I can start doing things. So I would, I'm still in this form programmatically. I'm still within it. So I would say um, s phrase equals dot cb discovery phrase. And so that's going to be whatever text they typed in that combo box. So if they picked one of my phrases, good for them. If they type something different, though, I will get that, and I will know. And then I would have my code, oh, sorry. I would first say if tag equals OK. Or I might say if tag is not equal to OK, then exit sub. You know, like, get me out of here. But I would want to unload the form and stuff first. So I'll just say if tag equals OK. And actually, this is getting, this is these details I'm showing you right now are really not that important. What order you do some of this in. Um, but what I really do is I declare a variable for the tag. I don't know what I just clicked. There's no telling. Oh, <laughs> I'm a spaz. This is why I'm so far behind in my work, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> OK, um, I declared a variable for that. And so while I'm still in the form, I would say, after I showed it, I would say the tag equals the tag, whatever it is, s tag equals whatever that tag string is. And then the phrase equals this. Now, I'm probably doing a few more steps here than are actually necessary. Um, but I won't confuse you by explaining what all the 20 other ways you could have done this. OK, so I showed the user the form. I got the phrase that they chose to type into it. And then I'm going to say if my little variable Get this back where it belongs. OK, if this equals OK, then do 
this stuff. And here I can, I'm done with the form so I can unload it. And I can set it equal to nothing. Then if they set okay, then I want to do something in the discovery. Like then your Mac will just go do whatever it wanted um, in the discovery. So you might, you know, be at the selection I'll just do that so we can see what happens. I, or you probably would be like the active document. Oh. Maybe doing something with that. Um, but I'll just do this. Wherever our selection is whatever selected it's it'll just put our phrase in so I assume you've already got some way that you're putting whatever phrase they chose into the document so here you would just put what they typed and then you're basically done okay. I think that's it well we have one thing we have to do to the form still because we told it that the tag is cancel and then if the tag is okay do this otherwise it's not going to do anything so let's go back to the form and I slap this little button on it here in that when they click the OK button and this will work if they press enter or do the little activate thing too we want to say um, with me me is the form that we're in with me we want the tag to equal OK and we want the form to disappear. Now you might be doing this a different way, like you show the form and then run all the code inside the form. That's okay. Um, so sorry if this confuses you, but this is just sort of the method I'm used to. And then we're good. So let's do this. Let's just open a blank document. This is actually our template. My discovery. So let's say their cursor is right where they want this discovery number to go. Then back in our code, Alt F11, let's try to run this and see if it works or not. I usually do a debug compile first and I see I did something wrong. Oh, the tag equals cancel. Silly me. Try again. Okay. It's all good, hopefully. So, F8 on the keyboard starts walking me through this. Okay, so it's got my form now. It's going to take the combo box and it's going to add these phrases to it. Now it's going to say that this phrase, whatever's number one, is the one that should show. So we should see special interrogatory. Then we set the tag to cancel so that if they don't choose OK, we don't do anything to the document. We show them the form. They see this, special interrogatory. Now there are ways to have this all selected at first so their cursor's not blinking here. Um, but you can see I click the drop down here, my choices. If I don't like my choices, Laura's special discovery. Now I say OK. It gets that I clicked OK, so it says, all right, the tag equals OK. Let's hide the form from view so we're not looking at it anymore. Now, my little S tag is whatever the tag was, which is OK. That's a good sign. My phrase is whatever they type, Laura's special discovery. And let's get unload the form from memory and set it equal to nothing. That's supposed to clean memory up so we're not bogging things down. And if that string, the S tag string equals OK, then wherever my selection was, we're going to put the phrase. And then you could, you know, you can format it, add styles to it. I probably would actually be using a range, not a selection, but that's just an easy way to show you. And there it is. What could possibly go wrong?